Well, it's another nice fall day here in South Dakota. And uh, basically something I see on the forums pretty commonly, Facebook groups, all that stuff, would be um, basically the inner cooler pump would fail on these trucks. And just real quick to explain how this works. So air is coming through the plenum, down through the supercharger, and getting compressed. And while it's after it's being been compressed, it goes through this little plate right here, and that plate has attached to it uh, intercooler brick, and uh, basically that is removing heat from the airstream going into the engine, so cooling the air down. And by doing that, it's removing heat in and transferring it into the fluid, the intercooler fluid. So anyway, um, you can see in the back, those two little hoses right there, those actually go down into the intercooler. One's an inlet and one's an outlet. The one on the top is the outlet coming back from the supercharger. So anyway, it comes out of there, comes across this top tube right here, and then poops into this intercooler reservoir where basically all the excess coolant is sitting. Nothing's really happening in there other than at the bottom, like kind of down there, is a hose that goes down and drops down to, I don't remember if it goes to the pump. I think it goes to the pump. Anyway, the inlet of the pump, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, and it kicks out, um, goes into the pump and comes out the other side. So anyway, that hose I was just pointing at is this guy right here. And it goes into that intercooler pump and gets pumped out through that arrow. And so anyway, you can see the little arrow right there. So anyway, since uh, since I put a different uh, heat exchanger, this is the LFP heat exchanger here. It basically goes through that terrible fitting and goes into the top of the uh, the top of the heat exchanger. And this is a dual pass, so it goes down and back and comes out right here. And then now this somewhat cooler coolant after it's been cooled off by this this heat exchanger follows that um, line and goes back up to the supercharger on the intercooler under the supercharger to do all over again so that's basically how how this system works and uh, you know the the motor this motor right here is a brushless or, uh, excuse me a, a brush having Whoa, that was close. <laughs> motor. And so it wears out. And uh, you can smack it with a hammer. It might come back, whatever, that type of technique. But generally, this is almost like a maintenance item. So if that, uh, if that screws up on you, um, now you know how to replace it. Just a couple of hose clamps and, and that wiring connection there. So um, anyway, uh, obviously the truck is not moving any fluid now so I'm gonna go start it up and see if it works okay so I just fired up the truck there it is the coolant is moving you can see that it's really just water right now but anyway so that's moving like it should so that's a good sign um, I would periodically check this just as kind of a, a health check for the vehicle. That would rob your your Lightning or Harley pickup of quite a decent amount of horsepower because these really start to make heat after they uh, are run pretty hard. So anyway, that's what you want to look for, just that churning of fluid, you know, to show that it's on. So another little thing you can do, maybe if you're at the track and the truck is pretty heat soaked, um, and you wanted to try and cool it off. This doesn't really work super great with uh, the trucks that don't have fans. My heat exchanger, I didn't didn't opt for the fans on it. Um, but if you if you did have the fans, you could come underneath here um, and open this fuse panel. And this is how you would find it normally for a uh, lightning. And anyway, 
Uh, I know that it's this one just because I, I kind of remember it. And uh, also I can see all the, the marks on it from me having removed it before. But anyway, um, this also is kind of handy when you're trying to drain the system. Um, but anyway, I'm going to remove that relay really quick and uh, we'll catch back up. Okay, so I needed two hands for that sucker, but here's the relay. As it came out, it came out uh, like that. So if you look at the side diagram there, the load is the number three and five. So that's going to be um, the two that you're going to basically jump with a little piece of wire like this. So anyway, I got these two. I'm gonna stick that down in there. So now I heard the I heard the pump kick on. I can see it's moving in here. There it is moving. And also I could if I was still not you know wondering go down below and feel it or hear it working there. So anyway, that's a I don't know if the camera's going to pick up that sound or not. But it's on and it's working. So uh, anyway, that's a way to uh, to make sure that's working. A second way, and cool it off if you're at the track, or also um, it's a good way to drain the system a little bit if you're um, gonna, you know, perhaps like clean the intercooler out, like what these trucks need <laughs> somewhat regularly. Um, you can do that. Um, and that, that helps kind of, rather than spilling it, you can just do that and it'll pump as much of it out as it can. So, anyway, hope this uh, video helps somebody out and uh, kind of shows you how the system works. And uh, this system is the same for Harley trucks and uh, basically the same for GT500s, basically the same for Cobras. So, um, anyway kind of um, hopefully described it for you. Thanks for watching.